Welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. I am just getting back from Murph and took home with me one of these Lulzbot Sidekick 289s. And uh, I just got it assembled, got the first print off of it. And I'm really excited to show you guys what it is. I'm gonna start off this series by going through the assembly and then I'll follow it up with um, you know my first print and some of my thoughts. So stay tuned and thanks for checking out Greg's Maker Corner. First up is the box itself, and as you can kind of see here, uh, it's about the size of a standard PC box, maybe a tower PC that you would buy. And next up, you see the power cord and the warranty registration form. There's also a uh, toolbox that contains just the standard tools you would use, like Allen wrenches, a glue stick, and a, a pair of pliers. And then you see uh, actually removing the printer out of the box, you're going to get a nice foam pad that supports the printer and everything inside. So it's laid out really well. Uh, everything is nice and tight and secure. Should survive shipping, so no worries there. Here is the Lulzbot Sidekick 289 taken out of the box. Uh, you can see there's some packing materials and some clips that hold everything in including the hot end here. This is in the folded position. You can also see that the heated bed is uh, stowed away like this. So I really like how it folds up and is nice and compact. The view from the other side, while well, it's still folded. We also have some pieces that are just kind of set in here that we're going to be using later. So in order to get this set up, I'm simply going to remove the hot end of the bed and then basically connect it all together. I don't have any instructions. I'm sure there are some, but that being that this is something I just got from Murph, those aren't available yet. They haven't even announced this printer. So this is a little bit in the early stages here. Luckily, I did help pack it up at Murph, so I remember most of it. One thing I really like about this is that you can do it all with your hands. Absolutely no tools are needed. Some of these pieces are, it's either ABS or PETG, I'm not sure which. And then others are TPU. Means you just got to be careful with. If you do break them, you can probably just print some new ones, but it does require some force here. There we go. For the bed, we have these pieces down here. Have to be loosened up a little bit. And there are heat inserts in these packing pieces that these screw right into. And then this just kind of fits through here. The hot end here is completely modular. This has got a tight and narrow on it. Um, and this is like the kind of the basic uh, stock hot end. It also uses the 2.85 filament uh, by default. But I do have another uh, one, the Mosquito one on order, which does 1.75. One thing that I really like about this printer is that there's this uh, plug that you're gonna use and it's got all the wiring to it. So it's got a cooling fan here, looks like 5015. It's got a step remover for the extruder, and then it's also got um, the hot end fan here. In order to change the nozzle, I think it's probably going to be easiest to remove this uh, part cooling fan duct because otherwise it's going to be hard to get a wrench on it. Okay, and then I'm going to remove this orange piece. There really shouldn't be any of these uh, orange pieces on the frame. Okay, now I'm going to be putting the heated bed on, and you can see there's a connector here for where the thermistor and the power go. Um, you're gonna line this up right where these four holes are. And then basically the four black screws that you should still have will go into those to secure it. Go ahead and put those in. All right, and that should be nice and snug with no movement at all. You should have free motion on your bed. There are also these TPU clips. That you have to remove from back here. There's one on the top and one on the bottom. The top part of these are TPU and then these are just a solid printed material. And then your cable to power the heated bed is right here, um, tucked away in this uh, sleeve a little bit. If you get those cables plugged in, you definitely want to snug this up so you have proper strain relief. So that feels pretty good. No zip ties or anything needed, just a nice solid TPU connector that clips right into this printed piece here. And this is below the bed here. Hopefully you can see those Delrin uh, V-wheels. 
Just want to make sure that you've got a smooth travel there with no rough spots. I really like the magnetic bed. You can see the magnets underneath. You can also see that this is cut out, so it has a nice fit. Next up, I'm just going to open the screen here. Um, that's the SD card in case you're wondering. Got a nice little knob. And then you can see the where we're going to mount the hot end. So you see the BL touch here. Here's a few close-ups of the parts. You can kind of see the quality. I think it's pretty good quality. I believe uh, it came from the out of the print farm. It's like maybe some poor bridging there. Um, and there as well. But overall, you know, it's it's looking pretty good. You can certainly reprint these parts if needed. Another thing you're going to notice is all the extrusions are rotated. So they're at a 45 degree angle or so. And the V-wheels also, um, all the V-wheels on the machine are going to be going maybe at a different angle than what you might typically see. So kind of more on the corner. Not something that I've seen before. And here's the belted Z. Two belts that control that. And there are magnets at the top that secure it. Okay, I've got these three screws here that are going to be used to attach the hot end. And you can kind of see here from a top view. So there's, a, there's two screws here on either side, one here and one here. And then there's also one in the back behind the gantry. The screw with the sleeve is going to be the one that goes in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and get these in. So you're, again, you're going to use these shorter screws. The one with the sleeve goes in the back. Last one. I'm going to come around here. Try to find the hole from the back side. Okay, and you just want them where it's snug. You don't want to over tighten it. And the final step is just plugging the connector in. And there's only one way that it can go because it's got this. Magnets do work well, just in case you're wondering how it holds. If I take them off, it still holds it relatively well. Before we get going and uh, power it up, I want to make sure that everything is plugged in. So I've already done the hot end. And just come in here and make sure that, you know, your connector's looking good there. And make sure that your x-axis motor here is plugged in. So that's the connector here, it's a TPU connector. And then also check both Z-axis motors. You got one here, you got one here right behind the power brick or the power switch. And then make sure that your Y motor is connected. So all these connections have a nice TPU cover on them. This back one doesn't fit super great, so I imagine that might be revved in a future part revision. All these connections are gonna terminate in this case, which is the INC retro board. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick on something that I recommend, which is checking the pitch on the belts to make sure that they're both roughly the same. So check the outsides. In my case, they are. Um, you can use a an app called the Pano Tuner, which will allow you to get the exact frequencies when you um, twang the belt like I just did. And that's going to ensure that you get equal tension and don't have any weird Z artifacting. And to tension the belt, you just need to turn your knob to the right if you want to tighten it, left to loosen it. And that's going to hold true of all the other um, belts as well, including the X and the Y. What I've noticed is that there are no end stop uh, like optical or switch ones because they're using the sensorless homing, um, which is part of the TMC drivers.